Bo, what's up, Brody? What's up, bro? What's going on? How you chilling, man. How you feeling? How you how you living out there, Brody? Cooling, man. You know nothing. Chill. It's late out here. Well, it ain't yeah. late. Yeah, man. day on with. What's good? I, man, chilling, Brody. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you for joining me, bro. Definitely finally got you on here. Everybody was yeah. like, man, get Bo, get Bo. I'm like, man, Bo busy right now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Bro. I'm here now. So, how the vibe out there, man? How they treating you out there? Everything good, smooth? Yeah, it's cool. It's straight, man. They, you know what I'm saying? They they welcome me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I had got sick. You know what I'm saying? I had got sick when I got here, so I ain't really got a chance to be to get around and stuff like that. But I, yeah. just got, I got cleared today, so I practiced for well, the third time. The first two practices, that's how I got sick. But Oh, man. But you all good, though, right? Y'all hooping? Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, we got game on Saturday. Okay, but you all good to hooping that thing, though, right? Yeah, I got cleared this morning, so I'm sure. Okay, all right, bet, bet. Like I said, appreciate you for joining me, Brody. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Definitely an honor. Uh, some of these questions, bro, I'm going to kind of kind of mess with you a little bit, see what you come with. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just to, just to start off, Brody, just kind of, you know what I'm saying, for those who don't know, just kind of, you know what I'm saying, break down where you're from, um, your family you come from, you know what I'm saying, the household, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. From, from the east side of Aurora, born and raised, uh, come from a close-knit family, real uh, real competitive family, um, nice. athletic family. Um, all of us did some some type of sports, if not multiple sports. Um, you know, it trickled down from my grandfather. Grandfather was a three-sport, three, three sport, uh, all-state, all-American, track, football, basketball. And uh, all, my, all my aunts, my mother ran track. Um, a few of them play basketball, so I come from a real, you know, sport oriented, real close knit, family oriented family. Thanks, yeah. thanks, man. Like I said, you, you know, what I'm saying from a rural, bro. You know, your family is well known in the city, man. Yeah, all for something good. For sure, for sure. Probably. All right, so facts. All right, so we're gonna get some of these questions, man. My first one is, who is the goat? MJ, Kobe, or Bron? Unless you got a different goat, and then <laughs> put them in order. I right, the goat the goat for me, man. I, I think I got like that the last the last era for, yeah. for, for MJ. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, MJ MJ the goat for me for sure, but you know what I'm saying? He retired, I was probably like six, seven. Yeah. But for me remembering watching that six and seven and then just knowing what I know about the game, it's nice. just hard for me to go against MJ. But um, you know, for our era though, it's obviously it's LeBron. Facts. Yeah. Thanks. So you going you going MJ Braun and then Kobe or you going Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going MJ Braun Kobe for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um for you, who your favorite player now in the league that you rock with? Man. It's hard to say right now like yeah, for me being, you know, competitive and Thanks. I ain't got no favorite player but you know what? I think uh I mean obviously Braun, Dame a bad dude. Yeah. By Rhea Bad Dude. Uh who else, man? James, of course. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I I watch I watch a little bit of everybody though, but I ain't really got no no I mean if I had to pick a favorite play, you know I'm rocking with D Rose to to, to the wheels fall off. Nice. Nice. Now who was you rocking with growing up? Who was somebody that kind of inspired hey, you when you was hooping? Oh, I should have known hey, that. Yeah, he the only reason I hoop in the first place. Keep it on. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. He, he he put that he lit that fire in me to to, to want to be a, a pro basketball player. Facts. You ever met AI yet or no? Um, I mean, not like have a one on one conversation in person, uh -huh. but you know, I got close to him a couple of times, and then I talked to him on the phone when I was at UConn because my uh my coach KO played with AI, yeah. so you know he put that together. You know what I'm saying? So I talked to him once or twice on the phone, but I ain't really got down to sit in front of him and chop it up yet. Facts. Okay. Um, for you, give me your top five NBA players right now. Everybody healthy, right now. Yeah, everybody healthy. Yup. Going Bron, Steph, Katie, AD. I gotta go, James Harden. Oh, you ain't rocking with Luca? No, Luca ain't there yet. I mean, I like Luca, but I ain't taking Luca before none of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't happening. What about the claw, bro? No, not yet. 
the the clock cold too, but he just ain't. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, he obviously up there. Don't get me wrong, but in my top five, I can't put him before none of them. Definitely not Braun. Definitely not Katie. Definitely not AD. And then Kyrie and and James is just you know, that's just me. That's that's the type of player I am. So I, I gotta go with him. Facts. Okay. Um, you got a favorite basketball moment in your career, bro? Yeah, winning national championship for sure. Hands down. Right. Right. Yeah. I read up that you you read, you uh, won one in Croatia. Yeah, yeah, I won a championship in Croatia. Yep, yep won one. But that that one at UConn is is unbeatable, huh? Yeah, that one that you know, cause it it's overseas stuff, man. You know, like it's fun to win. You know, it's, it, it go down on your resume. You know, you gonna make you gonna make more money the next year winning that. But like, I wasn't I, I didn't I wasn't playing in front of my peers. I wasn't playing in front of my family. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't. I, like, we won that national championship. In, in the Cowboys stadium in front of 120,000. Yeah. So like that just whole, that whole thing. And growing up all my life, you know what I'm saying? Watching the game on Monday night, like, you know what I'm saying? And to be here and be in that moment and to actually be a player and be effective in that game is is a whole nother, whole nother story. Right. Especially y'all being the underdogs, man. Cause you know. Yeah, you know, seven C, first seven C to ever win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the uh the last regular season game before before the tournament we got beat by thirty five Louisville blew us out punished us like nobody expected that nobody seen that coming six games later we we holding up championship right yeah that was big that was big bro um for you who was that the toughest player that you ever played against that you know bring the, bring your dog out of you every time you hoop uh. I mean, we Especially talking being about, from Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Being from Chicago, you got dogs yeah. already. I mean, is we talking about just play a period or we talking about like actual game? Whichever you want to go with. Man, I don't know, man. That's tough. So many. Yeah. So many tough dudes that I ran up against, man. Like, yeah. But I mean, for me, for my toughest, my toughest guard in college, my my whole career in college would have had to have been uh Deion Waiters. Oh, Syracuse. Yeah, D Wade to Syracuse was a was a was a different animal. You know what I'm saying? He was, a, he was a fourth pick off the bench. So yeah, that lets you know right there what he what he was coming with. How many times y'all played them? Three. They beat us all three times. Damn. All three times. We know because he only did one year. So I played yeah. Syracuse multiple times, but I played him three times because that 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 year that I, my freshman year, he's a sophomore. We played three times. Uh. One at home, one at um, Q's, and then in the Big East time. Okay, okay. Um, for you, bro, I know being a hooper, playing with tons and hundreds of people, do you have a favorite teammate? I know it's kind of hard when you play on so many different levels. Yeah, I can't say I got a favorite teammate. Uh, okay. You know, obviously, I, I shared the most success and probably went through the most trials and tribulations with, with, with Shabazz and um right. and and DeAndre, DeAndre Daniels, obviously. But, um, you know, I played with, with – I, I had some great teammates, man, from from high school, you know what I'm saying? Just most of them – all them dudes I played with in high school, I, I grew up with. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Pampers. So, like, I to, to just grow up with them and have the success with them, like Snoop and, um, you know what I'm saying, Moosey and all them, we've been playing together at the same AAU team, third, yeah. fourth grade. So, like, that was fun. And then – you know, my AAU teammates was, you know, AAU the best time of your life. That's that's the best basketball for real. So, facts. I can't I can't really pick a favorite team. Like that. Facts. Cause I remember uh, my stepbrother, y'all played for this team. I can't think of the name. Uh, NB NBU or something like that. NB. I don't know, man. I played for so many. It was like it was like you, DJ Vaughn, Snoop. Uh, it was a bunch oh of yeah, other. that was the <laughs> yeah 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 that was yeah. the name. Uh, this dude named Ellis. Ellis yeah. had a little team and whatever. He was, like, putting together, like, the best players in, like, a rural period. But Yeah, y'all had a break. Yeah, I had, I had played. You know, back then, when any, any opportunity you get to hoop, you know what right. I'm saying? You're going to play. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know you kind of hit it on the head in the beginning, but who was that person that actually put the ball in your hand? And when was that at that moment when you realized, like, all right, I'm a, this is what I want to do with my life? Yeah, I mean, as a baby, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mom, I got pictures and stuff in my crib, and as a baby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
the basketballs and the soft basketballs in my crib. So I would have to say my mom's, right. my mom and my dad. But uh, I mean, basketball was just a part of our family. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was just, it was around. You know what I'm saying? So like, it was destined for you to happen. Yeah, I, I picked it up early. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like my auntie, I remember like my my grandfather training my aunties and stuff, and I'm just a little kid running around being annoying. Like, let me do it, let me do it. And he used to mm. like send me like up the block, like dribble up the block. I remember being on Lock Street, and he'd be like, dribble to the corner and come back with your right hand, or dribble to the corner and come back with your left hand, just to get me out the way so he can yeah. train. So, yeah, it was early, man. So that in football, I played football. A lot of people don't know that. I wanted, to, I wanted to go to the NFL before. Oh wow, for the NBA. Yeah, so when I, was that transition, though? About eighth grade, when I decided to go to East. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So why why East? I know that was a, you know what I'm saying, you born, born in the, East, man. Yeah, so it was Dustin. He was like, I got to yeah. stay at the crib. I ain't going nowhere else. Born and raised, East Side certified, for sure. Thanks. Hey, my, my mom said, I love me some Nisha. Yeah, man, I think my mom, my mom and your mom was real best friends in high school. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's what's up. Man, yeah, my, my mom's good people, man. Right. Definitely good people. Um, for you, what's something that you had to overcome that you're proud of today, bro? That kind of helped you become the man you are now. A lot of things, man. I've been through a lot of stuff, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A lot of things, bro. Like I can't really just pinpoint one thing, but uh I remember uh a, just a real a real tough time. Uh you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I remember, like, and I just, I ain't want to hoop. Like, I wouldn't say I ain't want to hoop no more, but, mm -hmm. like, basketball just wasn't the same no more at this time when my brother Aaron got killed. Yeah. Um, it was one of my junior year. The year we won, it was crazy. Starting off the year, uh, I was playing, I was playing good, I was playing decent, and I had hit, like, a like a little rough patch, um, struggling from the field, jumper wasn't falling, whatever. We had lost a couple games, and then he got killed. And it just was like... I don't know, man. Like it just it took a lot out of me. You yeah. know. I just wasn't feeling hooping no more. Like, I'm just like, I don't even want to play like right now. And um, you know what I'm saying? My my family and my friends and um just told me to keep going and just, you know what I'm saying, Aaron will want me to continue to play and you know what I'm saying, go out there and be the best that I can and go do what I set out to do in the beginning. Right. And, you know, I ended up overcoming that and three, four months later. He won championship, so yeah, crazy man. It it was that was a crazy year. So if I had to if I had to say something, it'd, it'd be that moment right there. Facts. Now that's that legendary picture where you were like half court pointing up, right? It was that yeah. one. Yeah, okay. yeah, that that's that's powerful, bro. Yeah. See, somebody said somebody said you dropped sixty in the high school tournament game, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the St. Charles game, right? Nah, I had fifty five that game. Oh, um, the sixty game was against uh. Proviso West. Yeah, Proviso West, them dudes came in there, you know, from the city. They came in talking yeah. crazy. I remember yeah. they uh they had uh started off like twelve oh. Okay. They was, talking, they was talking crazy. Wow, like you know how it go. Yeah, they they come into the birds thinking it's sweet. Thinking it's sweet, yeah. And yeah. talking all reckless and this you know my you know my <laughs> they just flick the switch. And just lit a fire in me, and I ran off like forty straight. Like I missed six shots that whole night. I was, I finished with sixty three, and I'm twenty for twenty six from the field. Damn, that's crazy. Uh, then my next one, bro, was like, you said what? Shout out to them. Oh yeah, facts. <laughs> um, for you, bro, how was your recruiting process for you? You know, what I'm saying some people say it's a real stressful situation. You know, what I'm saying it's, it's like, it's the next step in your life. Yeah. So for you, how was it for you? Did you enjoy it? Was it bad? You know, and what were some of the schools that you know that you were talking to? And if you have any top choices that you were thinking about? Yeah, the recruiting process wasn't it wasn't stressful for me. Mm -hmm. It was fun more so more so than anything. Um it was just really trying to figure out the best move and you know what what coaches was genuine and yeah. you know, cuz you know in the recruiting process when you're a top when you're a top prospect, they gonna tell you whatever to get you to their school, and then once you get to the school, you stuck. And they gonna yeah. do what they're doing anyway. So it was just that part was a little stressful, just 
trying to find the, the trust. Mm -hmm. Trust to, to put my career in, in y'all hands. So that part was a little stressful. But other than that, it was fun, man. Um, I wanted to go to Kentucky, obviously. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to go to Kentucky uh, following, you know, John Wall, D. Rose, and all. Come in, D. Rose, and it was like this. So, you yeah. know, felt like I was the next one. It was them where I, I always – Sharon Collins is the big bro. Yeah. Um, so I always watch Kansas. You know what I'm saying? UConn, obviously. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's how that's how that went. Kentucky, I ended up not going to Kentucky because uh, Marcus Teague um, decommitted from Louisville. Late. Okay, and he was the number one guard in our class. And you know, just not not saying that I couldn't go there and compete and get some minutes. I was just like, it it ain't no point in going there and doing all of that when I can go somewhere else and and play a lot of minutes on the same stage. So, Thanks. I mean, you got to understand politics too. So, thanks. So UConn, you know what I'm saying? What made you choose UConn? You know what I'm saying? Playing for the obviously a legendary coach, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and the, and the history behind UConn. But what was that that moment for you? It was like, all right, I'm going to UConn. Uh, UConn was getting investigated, man. Um, basically my whole recruiting process. Yeah, they, they couldn't recruit, and um, I, I had I had committed to West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, go back to the coaches. Uh, Coach Huggins, good people. Yeah, um, lied to me. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I was down there on the visit in the, in the, uh, at breakfast, he was like, "Yo, if you commit to us, we won't recruit no more guards. You know, you'll be the last guard that we recruit because they had already had two guards in my position already there, and that was older. Yeah, and they was only juniors. One was a junior, one was a sophomore." So I'm like, all right, bet. And I had I had an amazing time on my visit. Shout out to Truck Brian. You know what I'm saying? That was my host, my boy. Uh and I ended up committing. And literally I got I got flew back home. And I remember like yesterday, uh, went to school on Monday morning. And we got out of school and um I'm walking down to practice and my phone started blowing up. And uh I'm like, what's going on? And uh they had uh, ended up signing Jabari Hines from New York. And uh, he was a guard in my class. I'm like, damn, like, just told me two days ago, like, you ain't recruiting no more guards. So I'm like, all right, there's a red flag. Like, you lied to my face. So, like, and I ain't even there yet. Yeah. So I got out of that situation. And it, it's crazy how God worked because as soon as I decommitted from there and opened up, the next day, UConn got off probation and offered me a scholarship right there. And then I was like, this is this. Destiny. I'm, I'm yeah. going. I'm going. Yeah. So, Thanks. Yeah. Um, like you said, I know you kind of hit it on the head, but that that tournament, you know, what I'm saying, playing with, playing under Bass, well, playing with Bass, I should say. Yeah. How did how did he help you? You know, what I'm saying, as a as a person, as a player, you know, what I'm saying, because having somebody take you under their wing to help build you up, and then when he left, you became that person for somebody else. How did Bass yeah. really help you? I mean, we really learned together. Like yeah. Bass, he only a year older than me, like. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, and then his freshman year, it was all Kimba. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, it, it, it was literally all Kimba. And then Lamb came in, and Bass did his thing too. But he ain't have a star role. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But when I came in, he was really, he was thrust into that role, and he was learning as as he was going at the same time. You know, being yeah. in that role, I was there too. So I played 30 minutes as a freshman. You know what I'm saying? So we played, we played a lot. We played together a lot. So we learned and went through different things at the same time. Now, don't get me wrong. He definitely helped me out when I first got there with, with some things um, yeah. on the basketball floor and just going at me every day. I can tell you that. He, he went at my neck, like, from literally the time that I stepped on campus. Like, yeah, he tried to let it be known, like, <laughs> look, shorty, like, <laughs> like, I got it too. Like, this is my, this my, this my stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, that, that probably was the best thing that he did was was go at me so hard and me being a competitor and being who I am, you know what I'm saying, just not backing down and wanting to get better every day just so I can get at this dude in practice. And then, you know, right. once that happened, the games come easy. So, yeah, that's, all. that's my boy, though. Thanks. Um, you know what I'm saying? So you played four years at UConn. Now, did you actually declare for the NBA draft in 2015? I mean, you know, yeah, because I was a senior. Okay. So okay. I, you know, I couldn't go back to school anyway. Okay. You know, yeah, 2015, I went to the draft, but 
Like, I, I, I was finna leave all, all every year before that. Like, I was gone every year before that. And then, like, the last minute, like, somebody that, I, that I'm close to or that I respect their opinion just co convinced me to go back to school. Yeah. yeah it's, my story crazy, man. Like, freshman year, I got in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I had got investigated for the uh the whole uh AAU coach Reggie Rose was flying my mom out to my visits. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. At that time it was illegal, which is completely retarded. Or it's dumb. Um, yeah. You know? And the next year they made it legal. And then um uh, so I got in trouble, man, and I had I had I missed three months of the season. And um the first three months, then I came back, I was playing super good like averaging 15 as a true freshman. They had me going, I remember, because you, when you young, well, not when you young, but you, when you in it, you, you check the mocks after every game. Yeah. Like, I came in scorching, like scorching. And I remember, like, after like a month, month and a half of playing, they had me going 12 to Boston. I was a lottery pick going to Boston. So I'm like, bet. All I got to do is keep keep this up. I'm gone. We straight forever. Yeah. And uh, I remember, like yesterday, we went, we flew to Notre Dame. It was in Big East play. We flew to Notre Dame. When I say the whole Royal came to Notre Dame, bro, like, I'm talking about everybody is there. And I find out that um, we had team dinner the night before. And um, coach pulled me in the hallway like, man, they reopened the investigation. Like, I'm like, what? Like, I already done served my quote-unquote sentence for real, like. I done served the time already. How they going to reopen it? They like, ain't never been done before, but it's happening. And I couldn't play for the same stuff. I couldn't play, and I missed, like, another, like, three weeks. And at that time, I came back, and I was in the middle of Big East play. This was the real Big East. This when the Big East was <laughs> Big East. Yeah. And I couldn't get that rhythm back. I couldn't get it back. And I ended up uh, – I mean, I finished the season well. I wasn't playing how I was playing before. Mm -hmm. I I ended up, I think I averaged like 10 my freshman year. And um, uh, they was just like, man, just go back to school one more year. You're going to have more green light. You're still young and do the same thing. And we are gone for real this time. And I went back, um, had a great year. We was, if we had went to the tournament, we would have been like a six seed, seven seed there mm -hmm. too. But we ended up getting banned from postseason play for the 09 team. So it ain't had nothing to do with us. We, yeah. we wasn't even, we was in high school, freshman in high school when this happened. And it ended up, we ended up getting the punishment for it. So that affected me, my sophomore year. So boom, now we go back to junior year, I go back to school, ended up winning the chip. That's when I should have left. Yeah. That's when I left. Uh, but uh, the agent that I was gonna go with at the time was like, if you leave, you're gonna be second round pick, this and that, then you taking chances, this and that. You're like, if you go back to school, do what I know you're gonna do. Y'all have a, a successful season. I don't care if I got a call in the favor, I'm gonna I'm get you drafted first round. So I'm like, how can I tell this man no and he wanted the best yeah. in the world? Like, he telling me he gonna call in the favor. I went back to school. I had a good year. I averaged 19 as a, as a senior. And but the the team we couldn't we couldn't get over that hump. We ended up falling one game short of making it to the tournament. And then uh, that's when I went pro. Yeah. So for your NBA draft process, how many workouts did you have? A lot. I can't even <laughs> remember. A lot. I canceled some of them joints. It was so many. Man, so it was like constant back and forth. Uh, like yeah, like every every day, every other day, you flying. All across the United States, <laughs> working out from Miami, fly to Boston, fly to the Clippers, fly back to Milwaukee. Like, yeah, it's like that. Man, so for you, did you have a whole like draft party with the fam? You know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Uh, no, nah, I ain't have a draft party. I went to the draft actually because okay, Brooklyn, Brooklyn was a, Brooklyn had told my agents they was gonna take me at at 27 with the 27 pick, and then um. Uh, what well, they was like considering it. It wasn't. It wasn't guaranteed mine, but it was between me and another dude. And then the draft came. We down there, and they ended up taking my boy Chris McCullough from um, okay. Syracuse. He had tore his ACL that year. He didn't even play. He played like four, four, three, four games. 
So like he wasn't even in the picture when when we was talking about it. Yeah. They ended up taking him, and then they was gonna take me second round, and um it was it was better to go undrafted than second round because when you go second round they got your rights and they can stash you. When you go undrafted and you sign a deal, you can kind of control your narrative, so so to say. Like you got more negotiating power. So I ended up having the, I had a deal before the draft was done with Brooklyn, but I didn't get I didn't get a chance to hear my name called. So you know what I'm saying? That was yeah. that was that was kind of that was kind of depressing. Just always always wanting to have that that op, that that moment where you shake David Stern hand and you be on the stage. Yeah. You know me me knowing I had a deal before the draft was over. That was it was uh relaxing. It took some of the pressure off. So it was all good. So when when I when I after the draft I flew back home. Then we had like a barbecue and stuff after I officially signed my my contract. Yeah. Okay. And then, so I think you had signed with the the Brooklyn the Nets. summer league team, right? Yeah, I had I, know I had a deal. I had I had a deal with the Nets, and then I I had to go okay. play. Some, I had to go play summer league regardless. But I had I had a partial deal with the Nets. They gave me a hundred thousand. Okay. So, so I was on payroll with the Nets. So I was getting checks from the NBA. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hey, you're still getting money. That's all that matters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Then you know you kind of went, you know, play with Brooklyn. Yeah. And then where'd you go to Brooklyn? Was it Detroit, right? Yep. Went to Detroit. I got I got waived. Yeah. I got waived. Um it was the uh the GM didn't want to let me go. The GM when he had to wave me, he's like, Oh, I really don't want to let you go. I wanna keep you. But the coach at the time, Coach Hollins, he uh I don't know what he was on, man. He was he was on some other stuff. But uh he uh he like Coach Hollins ain't gonna play you and we don't got a we don't got a D League, we don't got a G League team this year. We don't get one to next year. And he like, uh, he was like, uh, so I got to let you go because I'd rather let, let you go somewhere else and you could play yeah. and, and learn. Um, they wanted me to develop more as a point guard because I was a bucket. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I knew how to play. I knew how to play the one, but they wanted me to like really master being the one instead of a combo guard because I was, I was short in the NBA. Yeah. I would have had, had to play strictly the one. Um, so they wanted me to learn. They like, we need you to develop a little more, and we don't got a G League team. So I'm like, all right, cool. I respect it, whatever. I got picked up by Detroit, like, as soon as I left out the office. And when I went to Detroit, that's when they had just signed. Uh, they had just paid Reggie Jackson, and they had they had a couple dudes in my position or whatever, and um, they had D-League me. And uh, so I was in the D-League or whatever, and I just wasn't feeling it. Like, yeah. you know, I wasn't that stuff, man, like, the way they treat them players and and the, the salary that you get, it just it ain't right. And uh, you know, I had got family to take care of. You know what I'm saying? I had people depending on me, so I had to go over the water. Yeah. How'd you how'd you adjust to you know what I'm saying that over water lifestyle, man? Like I said, the time zone from the family, <laughs> the food, bro, the language. How how you do it, bro? Tough, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. It's it's hard. You know what I'm saying? But it, but it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? Your family taking care of you doing what you love. You know what I'm saying? I ain't waking up going to nine to five, checking in, clocking in nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm getting paid to do what I love, so I'm I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a long season, you're away from your people. You know what I'm saying? Language barriers, the food ain't the same, stuff like yeah. that. So it's a sacrifice, but it's temporary. You know what I'm saying? I'll probably be dumb, late thirties. Still got a whole life to live. Nice. So, you man. ain't you ain't you ain't out there eating no weird foods, huh, bro? Nah, man. <laughs> this one thing I'm, you know about me, man. I ain't trying no weird stuff. I ain't I ain't really trying no new stuff for real. I ain't gonna lie to you. So you keeping the same? What what you what you eating on out there? The same Actually, for you? Over over here is cool. Over here is decent. This is my first okay. time in this country. This is okay. my first time in Lithuania. Okay. Um, here is decent. Like it's super cool. Everybody speak English. Okay. Like, it's super. It's easy over here. Man, okay. It, 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 like they food is like American American eyes. Like it ain't it ain't no crazy stuff going on over here. Oh, so you good? You ain't gotta eat no, cool. no I ain't gold right. or nothing like that. And I'm, I'm 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 seasoned now, man. I'm I'm this is year six for me, so <laughs> I know how to cook. I know how to cook a little bit, stuff like that. But yeah. rookie, first two years coming over here, boy, it was a struggle, man. I ain't gonna no. cook nothing. Little Mike said, "Pizza and hot sauce, huh?" Yeah, <laughs> eat a lot of pizza, boy. 
I brought a jug of hot sauce like this big. I gotta have a hot sauce. <laughs> okay. Um, so this one, bro, like, especially for people from Chicago, this is my favorite question to ask them because everybody stumbled on this one. Yeah. For you, you gonna create a team from Chicago all time. A yeah. five. Who you rocking with one through five? Positions or just five people? Five got five. You can, how how you wanna do it? You can do one through five. Gotta tell five. Me, you gotta it, it depends. <laughs> am I am I putting together a, a team that like or is really finna go play or I'm just picking five people from Chicago that I um, bet. So if you had to run, so if you, you let's say one of your homies you do one of your homies from New York. You be like, all right, bring your best five from Chicago. I bring my best five from New York all time. Oh yeah, okay. That's that, that, that's pretty easy for me. Okay. I'm going D Rose. Okay. It's the toss up between D Wade and Isaiah Thomas. That's a good one. That's the toss up. If I had to, if I if I'm if, I'm, if I had to go and I'm going smart, I'm gonna go D Wade. Just okay. that he big and he played a two. Pooh gonna have a one. Okay. I'm gonna go. Man, this this one, this the three is tough. That three is so many bodies you could throw right there. The three is tough. The three. I'm gonna have to go. Mike Finley. Oh, okay. I might have to go with Mike. Like you, you can throw a couple people in there. Mike Finn, Quinn Richardson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's tough. That three, that three tough. I might have to go. I might have to go Mike Finn though. Nah, nah. Ta, I'm going Ta, cause Ta scrapping everybody else on the other <laughs> team. And he a dog. Sure he a dog. You ain't gotta worry about Ta. nothing. Yeah, I'm going Ta. I'm going Ta at the three. I'm going uh, Antoine Walker at the five. I mean, at the four. I'm going Big Ticket at the five. I'm going KG at the five. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold AD, on. though. Yeah, that's, AD. What saying, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Got... I might have to go Ticket at the four, AD at the five. Yeah. Ticket at the four, AD at the five. I ain't mad at that. Now, can yeah. you give me Can you give me your five off the bench? Can you do that or no? The bench? Yeah. I already know you're going to be one of them, so just give me four more. Yeah, okay. Me? <laughs> me? Uh, I got to go big homie thrill. Will Bynum. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the two guard. Um, the three, yeah. The three, I'm going to go. If, if I go, if I went with Mike Finn, or I went with T.A., I'm, I'm going to go with Mike Finn off the bench. Okay. Uh, Antoine Walker at the four. Um, I don't know about the five. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. About the five. I'm trying to think about the fives, man. I only know the young dudes at the five, yeah, man. Young too, like I can't think of no older five <coughs> that was like like that. Um, but if I had to go with the younger guys, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna either go with big big Okafor or uh. No, 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 no. Some, they say I'm Bari. Yeah, I'm going Jabari at the four. Bari at the four for sure. And I'm I'm gonna have I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go Antoine Walker at the five. I was gonna say Lil Mike beat me too. I was gonna say Big Cliff. Cliff. No, I was gonna say I was thinking Cliff before I thought about Bari at the four, but I can't take Cliff before Twan. Like okay. yeah. they, they don't yeah. forget. <laughs> Twan is now. Yeah. Okay. Tell beat me to it, bro. I gotta ask you. Your yeah. five from a row, bro. All time. Oh man, that's tough. I don't. Tell beat me to I it. I don't even really know everybody. Like me for sure. I'm number one. I'm the top dog. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's just how. Right. Right. That's how I feel. Uh, Kenny Battle. Um. Oh. I mean, if we going accolades, I gotta say Jay Taylor, but I don't really, I don't know Jay Taylor. He older than, you know, he, he mm -hmm. way older. Than yeah, but he he played, he touched the league, so you know, that ain't easy to do. Um, man. Uh, for me, for me, I go, I go young dudes. You know what I'm saying? I think for me, 
I'll give you my five. Like I said, I'm younger. I'm, I'm only yeah. 23. Your five. So mine, I think it was you. You, Snoop. Who the hell? You, Snoop. Thomas Wilder. White. Thomas White. No, Wilder from Sweet Girl. Oh, okay. Oh, you talking about Young Young. Okay. Yeah. I'm young. I'm only 23, bro. Yeah, you going Young Young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was you, Snoop, Thomas Wilder. I think it was Jay Harris. And I think I had – I threw Big Bro in there. I had to. That's my brother, Jawan Starks. Okay. I had to. I'm like, come on, I got to throw my brother in there. But yeah, 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 that's your family. I, I respect that. But everybody say Will. You got the Will in there. You got the. Uh, Will, was, Will, 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 Will was a bad. That was a bad dude. Will, Will, Will was cold. Yeah. Yeah, Will was cold, man. Somebody said oh. Bo, Will, Croft. Oh, Marcus Cole Croft. Yeah. I mean, we were tough. I don't know. I can't. I, it's. <laughs> It's tough. It's, a, it's too many names, but in there, everybody gonna feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But I don't know. Me, I'm going. Me, I'm going. Thomas Wide. I mean, uh, uh, Kenny Battle. Justin Sarasota. Is he counting him? He fr he he from, he, he from Chicago, but he he, hey, he did like hey. three, three, four, he did two, three years at West. Hey, hey, hey. two he years, tough. two years. You 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 <laughs> you here. Hey, he so, touched the city, bro. Hey, that's all that matters. Yeah. He touched the city. So, uh, yeah, I'm going Justin Sarasoli. Uh, Somebody said Sean Collins. Yeah, hold on. I mean, that's <laughs> my man and all that. He good people. But, no, nah, we talking about top five out, out of Aurora. Y'all yeah. yeah, throwing any names out there, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, last two. I could go Will. Will was cold, man. Yeah. Will Will got my respect that when he was when he when he was actually hooping. Will Will was a bad dude. And then that fifth spot. Mm, Damian Mason used to go crazy too when he was at West. See, I'm a young dude. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, he went to West. He played he played with Justin and them, but he went to Marquette. But I don't know. That fifth spot tough. That fifth spot tough. I don't know. Man, my pop said Billy Taylor. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, I, that's too old for me too. I don't know. <laughs> who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> okay. Um, for you, bro, how do you how you deal with pressure, bro? How you how you stay focused under pressure? What kind of pressure? Basketball pressure? Any pressure. You could do life, you could do basketball, how you how you stay focused, how you keep going. Hey, basketball sure. pressure is 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 it's what I do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I, I trust the work. And I, I, you know what I'm saying? I trust the work that I put in. You know what I'm saying? If I, right, that's, that's how I deal with that pressure. You know what I'm saying? I, I know I put the work in. I know I spent enough time in the gym. And I know I took this shot or whatever it is that I got to get done millions of times before this, this situation or whatever moment that I'm in. So that's how I keep the uh, handle the pressure in basketball. Life is different. Life, you know, you just – Buckle down, trust God, and see how it's going to play out. Your plan is written already anyway, so. Thanks. Um, for you, bro, do you have any, any routines you do before a game? Um, yeah, foam roll. Make sure that my body loose and stretch. I don't hurt, hurt myself. Um, go out there and get a couple shots up, about mm -hmm. 50 to 100 shots. Uh, get a good sweat going. I listen to music. So who on the it. playlist? Who on the playlist? <sighs> are you are you are you a, are you a turn up dude? You got to get going, or are you more of a chill jazz kind of? You know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, ain't doing no jazz and nothing like. <laughs> it's you know what I'm saying. That like, <laughs> I, if I want to chill, I'm listening to like Drake or like Rod Wave or something like that. Okay, got you. And, like, you know what I'm saying, or even the the J, like a J Cole type of song. If I want to chill, but okay, I ain't, I ain't really going into no game trying to chill neither. So yeah, so you got to turn up. Yeah, I'm coming to hurt you. So yeah, it's, it's Dirt, me, little baby, her. You know what I'm saying, them type of dude. You know okay. Saying? For you, bro, what, what's what's your pregame meal? You got a pregame meal. You more of a light eater. 
You know what I'm saying? I know you ain't supposed to eat a lot before a game, but it's tough over here, man. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's tough over there. Uh, so I, I ain't really got no meal overseas. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just it's what I got here or, you know what I'm saying? If I find a spot that I'm, that I'm really feeling, mm -hmm. I, I try to go do that. But nah, like over like, and it's just different. Like over here, man, like you might have, like if I got a game at five, mm -hmm. I might have a shoot around at like 10, 30, 11. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be a real shoot. Like, it ain't like America where, like, you're shooting around, you finna get up a couple shots, mm -hmm. shoot a couple free throws, and, and, like, walk through the other team sets. Like, here, this, like, practice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to get a real sweat. You're going to be sprinting. So, like, I'm if, if I got a shoot around, I'm, I'm going to want to come home and, and, and get that nap. If I don't get that nap, I ain't going to I ain't gonna be me. <laughs> So I gotta come get a nap, and then by the time I get up from the nap, it's time to be at the gym. I be at the gym at three, so like oh. I, it's hard for me to really go sit down and eat somewhere. Yeah. So I like try to order some pasta, or something, something that I can warm up, right. you know what I'm saying? And, and just bang out real quick before I go to the gym. Okay, so, but um, what has the game of basketball taught you, bro? That carries into everyday life. BB Tom. <laughs> I nap for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DV. You know I gotta get that sleep, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but what has the game taught you, bro? That carries into everyday life for you. You say what? What has the game of basketball taught you that you carry into everyday life? <sighs> uh, just being resilient. Uh, you know I had so many ups and downs with this game, man. Like, yeah. Uh, it done brought me a lot of joy, but it brought me a lot of pain also. Uh, a lot of sadness, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world, man. It's, uh, I'm blessed and I'm super thankful for, for my gift. Right. So, yeah, just being resilient. Just, you know what I'm saying, knowing, knowing that to fight back and never give up, never quit. And as long as you stay with it and continue to trust God and work hard, things will, things will work out for you. Thanks. Um, for you, you know what I'm saying, what – a younger a younger hooper come to you and say, "Bo, I need some advice." What advice would you give the younger hoopers coming up, man? That's trying to get to where you at. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get to the NBA, trying to succeed in college. What would you tell them? Grind, grind. That's the only thing gonna get you there. Yeah. You know Putting in the work, you gotta put the work in. Like, it, you get to a point like talent only take you so far. You know what I'm saying? You get to a point, like especially when you get to college, like everybody. All Americans, everybody, five star, four star recruits, everybody is that dude in their neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, talent only gonna take you so far. You gotta have the drive and the work ethic to, you know, outwork them and overcome all of the other things that come with, you know, this game. And then just carry yourself the right way. Yeah. You, know, you know, try to stay out of trouble as much as you can. Had to the cleanest slate that you can have, the cleanest image that you can have because these politics is, is, <laughs> it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. Like, the people you got around you, like family members, like they know everything and they gonna hold it against you. So just try to carry yourself the right way. Thanks. Um, you got a favorite hooper shoe? What's your favorite hooper shoe you like to hoop in? Right now, gotta be, the, I mean, last couple of years I've been wearing Kyrie's. Last two, three years I've been wearing Kyrie's, but I love the Kobe's. Um I love the Kobe's. Uh it's probably yeah, Kobe's and Kobe's and, and, and Kyrie's. Okay. Yeah. All right, what's your favorite basketball movie? Loving basketball. Yeah, I grew up on that. <laughs> I wear okay. twenty two, man. I was I was going to SC in eighth grade, man. I thought I was Quincy McCall. Man. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm trying to think, man. You kind of reminded me of that. Dang, what will happen? Is it true about you went crazy on Romeo or something like that? Dunked on him or something like that? I ain't dunk on him, but I, I like, I, I got off on him though. It wasn't even. It really wasn't even necessarily. Uh, it would. I, it really ain't wasn't even necessarily Romeo. I mean, obviously he Romeo, and it was yeah. easy to deal. But it was more so I got off on a team, and. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, Stomby, you talking about. <laughs> he on your neck, bro. <laughs> yeah, my dog. Right, come on. Kale, you don't like love and basketball, bro? Come on, man. I ain't gonna lie, you threw me off with that too, though. Who don't love love and basketball, though? I, I hear you. Oh, you said basketball movie, though. What other movie I'm gonna say? Above the Rim? Coach Carter. Hurricane Season. Nah, that's, that's, I don't even remember. I seen that movie. <laughs> Coach Carter, you got a better argument, but I grew up on love and basketball. Okay, I, I respect that. You know what I'm saying? It was more of a, I grew up on it, seen it a million times. Coach Carter, cool too, but that, it's like a comedy for real. I got you. I got you. Okay. Now, these questions yeah, right he here, got bro. Game too. He got game. He got game. He, I can say he got game. I definitely, definitely oh, grew up. He got game for sure. But okay. them two. Okay. Now, these, these right here, who would you rather have on your team? Bron and KD. Bron. Steph or Dame? Healthy Steph? <laughs> yeah, everybody healthy and they prime. Yeah. Harden or Luka? Hard. Kawhi or Giannis? Kawhi. Brad Bill or Jimmy Butler? That's tough. I'm going to have to go with Jimmy. Uh, the Joker or Embiid? Embiid. Uh, Dirk or Tim Duncan? Mm. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> mm. Hey, I, I told you, bro, in the beginning, some of these I'm going to kind of – I'm going to see what you got, man. Yeah, I, I'm going to – I think I got to go with Timmy D, man. <laughs> Solid okay. stats. Yeah. Steve Nash, Jason Kidd. I got to go with Steve. Mellow or Paul Pierce? Mellow. I don't like Paul, man. I, I kind of know the answer to this one, but Russ or D. Rose? Pooski. Poop Dean, boy. Over everybody, boy. <laughs> okay, I feel you. All right, give me your top five rappers all the time. <laughs> oh man! I mean, I I wasn't old enough for. for hey, it's, it's I, yours, bro. It's yours. Whoever your top five is: Big Pop, Jay Z, Lil Wayne, and that fifth one tough. I don't know. I got. I don't know. I don't know about the fifth one. Yeah, I don't know about the fifth one. All right, well, man, we'll talk. I think mine, mine kind of different. I think mine was, uh, I had Tupac, Jay-Z. I'm a big Nip fan, so I had Nip at that three. Nip. Kanye, and I think I had Meek. Yeah, I think my fifth would have to be Meek for sure. Yeah, okay. So That's you, the key, too. Love Pops. Oh, uh, yeah. Love Pops. Pops would get me amped to this day. Facts. Back in the 90s. Facts. All right, so give me, if you could listen to three albums, any genre, all time, or albums, or mixtapes, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. what, what do you rocking with? I ain't gonna lie. I love Dirk Joint, man. His new joint. Like, I think I'm gonna listen to that forever. His, uh, yeah. I forgot the name of it. It ain't signed to the streets, too. Let me see. What's the name of this joint? Just because y'all waited, too. Yeah, the deluxe. Okay. Movie. Yeah. I love Shorty Joint. Um, but Lil Wayne, uh, see, Wayne got so many. You got to throw the no ceilings in there, bro. Yes, I'm finna say no ceilings, but I love the Carters, too. Uh, I don't know. Any of Lil Wayne joints from 2006 <laughs> to 12. Okay. All right, man, I'll give you Wayne that. Joints. No ceilings if I had to pick, though. Um, and then... One of, one of, one of Jay-Z joints. Uh, American Gangster, my three. Yeah, either American Gangster or... Uh, the, is, it, is it Blueprint or the... What is it? No. Yeah, yeah that joint. That so joint. I think... Mine is a uh, victory lap, graduation, and American Gangster. 
Yeah, you can't go wrong with. I, see, I ain't a big Yay fan though. I ain't never really been a. Big I'm a big yay. old Yay fan. I ain't rocking with yeah. his new. I ain't even the dude. old Yay. Like I liked them, but I I like I never like bought a Kanye CD and just. Yeah, vibe yeah. to it. Yeah, just banged it. Like I liked his songs though. You know, if I heard them. Right. Yeah, Jay Z, he the goat, and then right. you know Wayne. That's our goat. That's our era. That's our goat. And then, yeah. Dirk my Dirk my man though. Facts. All right, so what's your favorite song right now, bro? First song you play when you get in the whip. What's the first song you turning on? Today, right now? I'm right now. Uh Everybody by Lil Baby. That's like super recent. He just dropped that like four, five days ago. That's that new one. Yeah, that's like super new. But like I said, I'll be like I bro, I play Dirk all day long, like like dirt shit touch touch my soul, bro. No homo for pause, I should say. Uh but he uh what's the name of this song? Um That Dirk, the voice, man, that's something different. Yeah, the voice, uh when we shoot, yeah, watch your homie, all yeah. that. Like he talking so, to me. So Dirk your favorite Chicago rapper then? Yeah, hands down, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I ain't mad at that. Uh I got there's two more for you, bro. What was the best advice somebody ever gave you before? I don't know, man. I don't know. Be honest with you, I I I I didn't had a lot of a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, give me some good advice, bro. I can't pinpoint one thing somebody said to me. Mm -hmm. Uh but um my grandfather, I'll never forget, you know, my grandfather told me when I was a shorty. I'm saying, no matter what you do, always make sure your people straight. Thanks. Always, always take care of your family, no matter what. That's what a man do. So. Thanks. So how you how you how you deal with them people that be you ain't heard of in ten years? Like, hey, bro, let me hold a quick hunt down real quick. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I I do my best. You know, what I'm saying to help when I can. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm a real I'm a real one too. So yeah. You, know, you are. You, you ain't even you ain't even finna ask me if I if I ain't talked to you in ten years. You're not even you're not even gonna have the courage to ask me for no paper. Okay. And then the last one I got for you, Brody, uh who you think I should have on here next? You know what I'm saying? Somebody you can plug me with. You know, you have on here. I don't Man, oh. I had I had Lil Mike on here, I had Vic Law from the Magic on here, I had John Holland. I had some decent people on here. From that, from the from the area, probably like thrill. Probably try to get thrill on here. Man, so, plug him, bro. I, I hit him, man. He just uh, he was on live. I hit him up. He was like, yeah. I bet DM me, but he never hit me back. Thrill me big time sometimes. I have. Man, because uh, Fabian, man, he plugged me with uh, Quincy Miller. I'm waiting to hear back from him. Billy That's Garrett. Yeah, I'm waiting to hear back from them, man. I'm trying to get them on here, bro. I holla at him for you. That's my man. I talk to him every day. Uh, but uh, um, try to get Sharon on here. Try to get Sharon on here. He just called me right now. I try, I'll try to get him on there. I have DM him. I tell him to. Okay. Uh, he looking out for your for your DM. He probably yeah. trying to get back on this Call of Duty. <laughs> what, what you what you got? You got the Xbox. You got the phone. PlayStation. I got the phone. I try to find that. I just can't get it, man. Like then, like soon as it dropped, I came over here. So like I couldn't uh. get it. Anymore. But you're going to grab it, though, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get it. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely going to get it. As soon as it gets back and restock. <laughs> but I spend okay. seven hours a day on this joint, man. Oh, yeah, man. I'm going to hey, DM you. I'm going to hop on right now. You send me your right. name. Send me. I'm on here, for sure. All right. All right, man. Hey, Boat, man, like I said, definitely appreciate you for taking time out your day, bro. All right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely was an honor, man. Sure, a lot appreciate. of people was hitting me like, man, get Boat, get Boat, get Boat. I'm like, man, chill, 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 man. He just got over the... <laughs> You know what yeah, I'm I hope, I, hope I fulfilled all y'all, you know what I'm saying, needs and requirements, man. You know, I'm going to try Facts. to keep it as best as I can without, you know, talking too crazy on here. But Facts. So, but man, bro, man, man bro, stay safe, bro. Keep grinding. Good yeah. luck for your game Saturday, bro. And uh, I'm going to DM you, bro. We're going to chop it up. Yeah, for sure. All right, my all man. Right. Love, Brody. Love.